Stanislaw II Augustus also Stanislaw August Poniatowski, born Stanislaw Antony Poniatowski, 17 January 1732 – 12 February 1798, who reigned as King of Poland and Grand Duke of Lithuania from 1764 to 1795, was the last monarch of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. He remains a controversial figure in Polish history. Recognized as a great patron of the arts and sciences and an initiator and firm supporter of progressive reforms, he is also remembered as the King of the Commonwealth whose election was marred by Russian intervention. He is criticized primarily for his failure to stand against the partitions, and thus to prevent the destruction of the Polish state. Having arrived at the Russian imperial court in St. Petersburg in 1755, he became romantically involved with the future Empress Catherine the Great 1762 With her connivance, in 1764 he was elected King of Poland. Contrary to expectations, he attempted to reform and strengthen the ailing Commonwealth. His efforts met with external opposition from Prussia, Russia and Austria, all committed to keeping the Commonwealth weak. From within he was opposed by conservative interests, which saw reforms as threatening their traditional liberties and privileges. The defining crisis of his early reign was the War of the Bar Confederation 1768 that led to the First Partition of Poland 1772. The later part of his reign saw reforms wrought by the Great Sejm and the Constitution of 3 May 1791. These reforms were overthrown by the 1792 Targovica Confederation and by the war in defense of the Constitution, leading directly to the Second Partition of Poland 1793, the Kosciuszko Uprising 1794, and the Final and Third Partition of Poland 1795, marking the end of the Commonwealth. Stripped of all meaningful power, Poniatowski abdicated in November 1795 and spent the last years of his life a virtual captive in St. Petersburg. Life <inaudible> <inaudible> Youth Stanislaw Antony Poniatowski was born on 17 January 1732 in Wolchin, then in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and now in Belarus. He was one of eight surviving children and fourth son of Princess Constantia Zartoryska and of Count Stanislaw Poniatowski, Ciolek coat of arms, Castellan of Krakow. His older brothers were Kazimierz Poniatowski (1721–1800), a Podkomorzy at court; Franciszek Poniatowski (1723–1749), canon of Krakow Cathedral who suffered from epilepsy and Alexander Poniatowski (1725–1744), an officer killed in the Rhineland Palatinate during the War of the Austrian Succession. His younger brothers were Andrei Poniatowski (1734–1773), an Austrian Feldmarschall; Michal Jerzy Poniatowski (1736–94), who became primate of Poland. His two older and married sisters were Ludwika Zamoyska (1728–1804) and Isabella Branica (1730–1808). Among his nephews was Prince Józef Poniatowski (1763–1813), son of Andrzej. He was a great grandson of the poet, courtier, and alleged traitor Jan Andrzej Morstan, and through his great grandmother Catherine Gordon, lady in waiting to Queen Marie Louise Gonzaga, he was related to the House of Stuart and thereby connected to the leading families of Scotland, Spain, and France. The Poniatowski family had achieved high status among the Polish nobility of the time. He spent the first few years of his childhood in Gdansk. He was temporarily kidnapped as a toddler, on the orders of Józef Potocki, voivoda of Kiev, as a reprisal for his father's support for King August and held for some months in Kamienik Podolski. He was returned to his parents in Gdansk. Later he moved with his family to Warsaw. He was initially educated by his mother, then by private tutors, including Russian ambassador Hermann Karl von Kaiserling. He had few friends in his teenage years and instead developed a fondness for books which continued throughout his life. He went on his first foreign trip in 1748, with elements of the Imperial Russian Army as it advanced into the Rhineland to aid Maria Theresia's troops during the War of the Austrian Succession which ended with the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle This enabled Poniatowski both to visit the city, also known as Aachen, and to venture into the Netherlands. On his return journey he stopped in Dresden. 
Topic: <laughs> Political career. The following year Poniatowski was apprenticed to the office of Michal Friedrich Czartoryski, the then Deputy Chancellor of Lithuania. In 1750, he travelled to Berlin where he met a British diplomat, Charles Hanbury Williams, who became his mentor and friend. In 1751, Poniatowski was elected to the Treasury Tribunal in Radom, where he served as a commissioner. He spent most of January 1752 at the Austrian court in Vienna. Later that year, after serving at the Radom Tribunal and meeting King Augustus III of Poland, he was elected deputy of the same Polish parliament. While there his father secured for him the title of Starosta of Chemizel. In March 1753 he travelled to Hungary and Vienna, where he again met with Williams. He returned to the Netherlands, where he met many key members of that country's political and economic sphere. By late August he had arrived in Paris, where he moved among the elites. In February 1754 he travelled on to England, where he spent some months. There he was befriended by Charles York, the future Lord Chancellor of the United Kingdom. He returned to the Commonwealth later that year, however he eschewed the same, as his parents wanted to keep him out of the political furore surrounding the Ostrogsky family's land inheritance see, fee tale, Ordinatia Ostrogska. The following year he received the title of Stolnik of Lithuania. Poniatowski owed his rise and influence to his family connections with the powerful Czartoryski family and their political faction, known as the Familia, with whom he had grown close. It was the Familia who sent him in 1755 to St. Petersburg in the service of Williams, who had been nominated British ambassador to Russia. In St. Petersburg, Williams introduced Poniatowski to the 26-year-old Catherine Alexeyevna, the future Empress Catherine the Great. The two became lovers. Whatever his feelings for Catherine, it is likely Poniatowski also saw an opportunity to use the relationship for his own benefit, using her influence to bolster his career. Poniatowski had to leave St. Petersburg in July 1756 due to court intrigue. Through the combined influence of Catherine, of Russian Empress Elizabeth and of Chancellor Bestuzhev Ryaman, Poniatowski was able to rejoin the Russian court now as ambassador of Saxony the following January. Still in St. Petersburg, he appears to have been a source of intrigue between various European governments, some supporting his appointment, others demanding his withdrawal. He eventually left the Russian capital on 14 August 1758. Poniatowski attended the SEJMs of 1758, 1760, and 1762. He continued his involvement with the Familia, and supported a pro Russian and anti Prussian stance in Polish politics. His father died in 1762, leaving him a modest inheritance. In 1762, when Catherine ascended the Russian throne, she sent him several letters professing her support for his own ascension to the Polish throne, but asking him to stay away from St. Petersburg. Nevertheless, Poniatowski hoped that Catherine would consider his offer of marriage, an idea seen as plausible by some international observers. He participated in the failed plot by the Familia to stage a coup d'état against King Augustus III. In August 1763, however, Catherine advised him and the Familia that she would not support a coup as long as King Augustus was alive. <laughs> Kingship <laughs> Years of hope Upon the death of Poland's King Augustus III in October 1763, lobbying began for the election of the new king. Catherine threw her support behind Poniatowski. The Russians spent about 2.5 meters rubles in aid of his election. Poniatowski's supporters and opponents engaged in some military posturing and even minor clashes. In the end, the Russian army was deployed only a few miles from the election same, which met at Wola near Warsaw. In the event, there were no other serious contenders, and during the convocation same on 7 September 1764, 32-year-old Poniatowski was elected king, with 5,584 votes. He swore the Pacta Conventa on 13 November, and a formal coronation took place in Warsaw on 25 November. The new king's uncles in the familia would have preferred another nephew on the throne, Prince Adam Kazimierz Czartoryski, characterized by one of his contemporaries as debauché, Sinon de voyer in French, debauched if not depraved, but Czartoryski had declined to seek office. Stanislaw August, 
as he now styled himself combining the names of his two immediate royal predecessors, began his rule with only mixed support within the nation. It was mainly the small nobility who favoured his election. In his first years on the throne he attempted to introduce a number of reforms. He founded the Knights School, and began to form a diplomatic service, with semi-permanent diplomatic representatives throughout Europe, Russia and the Ottoman Empire. On 7 May 1765, Poniatowski established the Order of the Knights of St. Stanislaus, in honor of St. Stanislaus of Krakow, bishop and martyr, Polans and his own patron saint, as the country's second order of chivalry, to reward Poles and others for noteworthy service to the king. Together with the familia he tried to reform the ineffective system of government, by reducing the powers of the hetmans Commonwealth's top military commanders and treasurers, moving them to commissions elected by the same and accountable to the king. In his memoirs, Poniatowski called this period the years of hope. The familia, which was interested in strengthening its own power base, was dissatisfied with his conciliatory attitude as he reached out to many former opponents of their policies. This uneasy alliance between Poniatowski and the familia continued for most of the first decade of his rule. One of the points of contention between Poniatowski and the familia concerned the rights of religious minorities in Poland. Whereas Poniatowski reluctantly supported a policy of religious tolerance, the familia was opposed to it. The growing rift between Poniatowski and the familia was exploited by the Russians, who used the issue as a pretext to intervene in the Commonwealth's internal politics and to destabilize the country. Catherine had no wish to see Poniatowski's reform succeed. She had supported his ascent to the throne to ensure the Commonwealth remained a virtual puppet state under Russian control, so his attempts to reform the Commonwealth's ailing government structures were a threat to the status quo. The Bar Confederation and First Partition of Poland Matters came to a head in 1766. During the same in October of that year, Poniatowski attempted to push through a radical reform, restricting the disastrous Liberum veto provision. He was opposed by conservatives such as Michal Wielhorski, who were supported by the Prussian and Russian ambassadors and who threatened war if the reform was passed. The dissidents, supported by the Russians, formed the Radom Confederation. Abandoned by the familia, Poniatowski's reforms failed to pass at the Repnin Sejm, named after Russian ambassador Nicholas Repnin, who promised to guarantee with all the might of the Russian Empire the golden liberties of the Polish nobility, enshrined in the cardinal laws. Although it had abandoned the cause of Poniatowski's reforms, the familia did not receive the support it expected from the Russians who continued to press for the conservatives' rights. Meanwhile, other factions now rallied under the banner of the Bar Confederation, aimed against the conservatives, Poniatowski and the Russians. After an unsuccessful attempt to raise allies in Western Europe, France, England and Austria, Poniatowski and the Familia had no choice but to rely more heavily on the Russian Empire, which treated Poland as a protectorate. In the War of the Bar Confederation 1768-1772, Poniatowski supported the Russian army's repression of the Bar Confederation. In 1770, the Council of the Bar Confederation proclaimed him dethroned. The following year, he was kidnapped by Bar Confederates and was briefly held prisoner outside of Warsaw, but he managed to escape. In view of the continuing weakness of the Polish-Lithuanian state, Austria, Russia, and Prussia collaborated to threaten military intervention in exchange for substantial territorial concessions from the Commonwealth, a decision they made without consulting Poniatowski or any other Polish parties. Although Poniatowski protested against the first partition of the Commonwealth 1772, he was powerless to do anything about it. He considered abdication, but decided against it. During the partition same of 1773-1775, in which Russia was represented by Ambassador Otto von Stackelberg, with no Allied assistance forthcoming from abroad and with the armies of the partitioning powers occupying Warsaw to compel the same by force of arms, no alternative was available save submission to their will. Eventually Poniatowski and the same acceded to the partition treaty. At the same time, several other reforms were passed. The cardinal laws were confirmed and guaranteed by the partitioning powers. Royal prerogative was restricted, so that the king lost the power to confer titular roles, and military promotions, to appoint ministers and senators. Starostu territories, and crown lands would be awarded by auction. The same also created two notable institutions, the Permanent Council, a government body in continuous operation, and the Commission of National Education. 
The partitioning powers intended the council to be easier to control than the unruly Sejms, and indeed it remained under the influence of the Russian Empire. Nevertheless, it was a significant improvement on the earlier Commonwealth governance. The new legislation was guaranteed by the Russian Empire, giving it license to interfere in Commonwealth politics when legislation it favored was threatened. The aftermath of the partition same saw the rise of a conservative faction opposed to the Permanent Council, seeing it as a threat to their golden freedoms. This faction was supported by the Zartorsky family, but not by Poniatowski, who proved to be quite adept at making the council follow his wishes. This marked the formation of new anti-royal and pro-royal factions in Polish politics. The royal faction was made up primarily of people indebted to the king, who planned to build their careers on service to him. Few were privy to his plans for reforms, which were kept hidden from the conservative opposition in Russia. Poniatowski scored a political victory during the same of 1776, which further strengthened the council. Chancellor Andrzej Zamoyski was tasked with the codification of the Polish law, a project that became known as the Zamoyski Code. Russia supported some, but not all, of the 1776 reforms, and to prevent Poniatowski from growing too powerful, it supported the opposition during the same of 1778. This marked the end of Poniatowski's reforms, as he found himself without sufficient support to carry them through. The Great Same and the Constitution of 3 May 1791 In the 1780s, Catherine appeared to favor Poniatowski marginally over the opposition, but she did not support any of his plans for significant reform. Despite repeated attempts, Poniatowski failed to confederate the Sejms, which would have made them immune to the Liberum veto. Thus, although he had a majority in the Sejms, Poniatowski was unable to pass even the smallest reform. The Zamoyski Code was rejected by the same of 1780, and opposition attacks on the king dominated the Sejms of 1782 and 1786. Reforms became possible again in the late 1780s. In the context of the wars being waged against the Ottoman Empire by both the Austrian Empire and the Russian Empire, Poniatowski tried to draw Poland into the Austro-Russian alliance, seeing a war with the Ottomans as an opportunity to strengthen the Commonwealth. Catherine gave permission for the next same to be called, as she considered some form of limited military alliance with Poland against the Ottomans might be useful. The Polish Russian alliance was not implemented, as in the end the only acceptable compromise proved unattractive to both sides. However, in the ensuing four year same of 1788 92, known as the Great Same, Poniatowski threw his lot in with the reformers associated with the patriotic party of Stanislaw Malachowski, Ignacy Potocki, and Hugo Kolotaj, and co authored the Constitution of 3 May 1791. The Constitution introduced sweeping reforms. According to Jacek Jedruch, the Constitution, despite its liberal provisions, fell somewhere below the French, above the Canadian, and left the general state laws for the Prussian states in German, Allgemeines Landrecht für die Proischen Staaten far behind, but was no match for the American Constitution. George Sanford notes that the Constitution gave Poland a constitutional monarchy close to the English model of the time. According to a contemporary account, Poniatowski himself described it, as founded principally on those of England and the United States of America, but avoiding the faults and errors of both, and adapted as much as possible to the local and particular circumstances of the country." The Constitution of 3 May remained to the end a work in progress. A new civil and criminal code provisionally called the Stanislaw Augustus Code was among the proposals. Poniatowski also planned a reform to improve the situation of Polish Jews. In foreign policy, spurned by Russia, Poland turned to another potential ally, the Triple Alliance, represented on the Polish diplomatic scene primarily by the Kingdom of Prussia, which led to the formation of the ultimately feudal Polish-Prussian alliance. The pro-Prussian shift was not supported by Poniatowski, who nevertheless acceded to the decision of the majority of same deputies. The passing of the Constitution of 3 May, although officially applauded by Frederick William II of Prussia, who sent a congratulatory note to Warsaw, caused further worry in Prussia. The contacts of Polish reformers with the revolutionary French National Assembly were seen by Poland's neighbors as evidence of a conspiracy and a threat to their absolute monarchies. Prussian statesman Ewald von Hertzberg expressed the fears of European conservatives. 
The Poles have given the coup de grace to the Prussian monarchy by voting in a constitution. Elaborating that a strong Commonwealth would likely demand the return of the lands Prussia acquired in the first partition, a similar sentiment was later expressed by Prussian Foreign Minister, Friedrich Wilhelm von der Schulenberg Kennert. Russia's wars with the Ottomans and Sweden having ended, Catherine was furious over the adoption of the Constitution, which threatened Russian influence in Poland. One of Russia's chief foreign policy authors, Alexander Bezborodko, upon learning of the Constitution, commented that the worst possible news have arrived from Warsaw, the Polish king has become almost sovereign. <laughs> War in defense of the Constitution and fall of the Commonwealth Shortly thereafter, conservative Polish nobility formed the Targowice Confederation to overthrow the constitution, which they saw as a threat to the traditional freedoms and privileges they enjoyed. The Confederates aligned themselves with Russia's Catherine the Great, and the Russian army entered Poland, marking the start of the Polish-Russian War of 1792, also known as the War in Defense of the Constitution. The same voted to increase the Polish army to 100,000 men, but due to insufficient time and funds this number was never achieved. Poniatowski and the reformers could field only a 37,000-man army, many of them untested recruits. This army, under the command of the king's nephew Józef Poniatowski and Tadeusz Kosciuszko, managed to defeat the Russians or fight them to a draw on several occasions. Following the victorious Battle of Zelensk, in which Polish forces were commanded by his nephew, the king founded a new order, the Order of Virtuti Military, to reward Poles for exceptional military leadership and courage in combat. Despite Polish requests, Prussia refused to honor its alliance obligations. In the end, the numerical superiority of the Russians was too great, and defeat looked inevitable. Poniatowski's attempts at negotiations with Russia proved futile. In July 1792, when Warsaw was threatened with siege by the Russians, the king came to believe that surrender was the only alternative to total defeat. Having received assurances from Russian ambassador Yakov Bulgakov that no territorial changes would occur, a cabinet of ministers called the Guard of Laws or Guardians of Law, Polish, Stras Pra voted 8-4 in favor of surrender. On 24 July 1792, Poniatowski joined the Targowice Confederation. The Polish army disintegrated. Many reform leaders, believing their cause lost, went into self-exile, although they hoped that Poniatowski would be able to negotiate an acceptable compromise with the Russians, as he had done in the past. Poniatowski had not saved the Commonwealth, however. He and the reformers had lost much of their influence, both within the country and with Catherine. Neither were the Targowice Confederates victorious. To their surprise, there ensued the Second Partition of Poland. With the new deputies bribed or intimidated by the Russian troops, the Grodno Sejm took place. On 23 November 1793, it annulled all acts of the Great Sejm, including the Constitution. Faced with his powerlessness, Poniatowski once again considered abdication, in the meantime he tried to salvage whatever reforms he could. <laughs> Final years. Poniatowski's plans had been ruined by the Kosciuszko uprising. The king had not encouraged it, but once it began he supported it, seeing no other honorable option. Its defeat marked the end of the Commonwealth. Poniatowski tried to govern the country in the brief period after the fall of the uprising, but on 2 December 1794, Catherine demanded he leave Warsaw, a request to which he acceded on 7 January 1795, leaving the capital under Russian military escort and settling briefly in Grodno. On 24 October 1795, the Act of the Final, Third Partition of Poland was signed. One month and one day later, on 25 November, Poniatowski signed his abdication. Reportedly, his sister, Ludwika Maria Zamoyska and her daughter also his favorite niece, Ursula Zamoyska, who had been threatened with confiscation of their property, had contributed to persuading him to sign the abdication. They feared that his refusal would lead to a Russian confiscation of their properties and their ruin. Catherine died on 17 November 1796, succeeded by her son, Paul I of Russia. On 15 February 1797, Poniatowski left for St. Petersburg. He had hoped to be allowed to travel abroad, but was unable to secure permission to do so. A virtual prisoner in St. Petersburg's Marble Palace, he subsisted on a pension granted to him by Catherine. 
Despite financial troubles, he still supported some of his former allies, and continued to try to represent the Polish cause at the Russian court. He also worked on his memoirs. Poniatowski died of a stroke on 12 February 1798. Paul I sponsored a royal state funeral, and on 3 March he was buried at the Catholic Church of St. Catherine in St. Petersburg. In 1938, when the Soviet Union planned to demolish the church, his remains were transferred to the Second Polish Republic, and interred in a church at Wolchyn, his birthplace. This was done in secret, and caused controversy in Poland when the issue became known. In 1990, due to the poor state of the Wallachian Church then in Belarus, his body was once more exhumed and brought to Poland, to St. John's Cathedral in Warsaw, where, on 3 May 1791, he had celebrated the adoption of the constitution that he had co-authored. A final funeral ceremony was held on 14 February 1995. Legacy. Topic. Patron of culture Stanislaw August Poniatowski has been called the Polish Enlightenment's most important patron of the arts. His cultural projects were attuned to his socio-political aims of overthrowing the myth of the golden freedoms and the traditional ideology of Sarmatism. His weekly, Thursday dinners, were considered the most scintillating social functions in the Polish capital. He founded Warsaw's National Theatre, Poland's first public theatre, and sponsored an associated ballet schools ballet school. He remodeled Ujazdow Palace and the Royal Castle in Warsaw, and erected the elegant Lazinki Royal Baths Palace in Warsaw's Lazinki Park. He involved himself deeply in the detail of his architectural projects, and his eclectic style has been dubbed the Stanislaw August style by Polish art historian Władysław Tatarkiewicz. His chief architects included Domenico Merlini and Jan Kamsetzer. He was also patron to numerous painters. They included Poles such as his protégé, Anna Rajetska and Franciszek Smuglowicz, Jan Bogomol Plersz, son of Jan Jerzy Plersz, Józef Wall, and Zygmunt Vogel, as well as foreign painters including, Marcello Baccarelli, Bernardo Bellato, Jean Piamon, Ludwig Marto, and Per Kraft the Elder. His retinue of sculptors, headed by André Lebrun, included Giacomo Minaldi, Franz Pink, and Tommaso Righi. Jan Philip Holzhauser was his court engraver and the designer of many commemorative medals. According to a 1795 inventory, Stanislaw August's art collection, spread among numerous buildings, contained 2,889 pieces, including works by Rembrandt, Rubens, and Van Dyck. His plan to create a large gallery of paintings in Warsaw was disrupted by the dismemberment of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Most of the paintings that he had ordered for it can now be seen in London's Dulwich Picture Gallery. Poniatowski also planned to found an Academy of Fine Arts, but this finally came about only after his abdication and departure from Warsaw. Poniatowski accomplished much in the realm of education and literature. He established the School of Chivalry, also called the Cadet Corps which functioned from 1765 to 1794 and whose alumni included Tadeusz Kosciuszko. He supported the creation of the Commission of National Education, considered to be the world's first ministry of education. In 1765 he helped found the Monitor, one of the first Polish newspapers and the leading periodical of the Polish Enlightenment. He sponsored many articles that appeared in the Monitor. Writers and poets who received his patronage included, Stanislaw Trembeki, Franciszek Silesi Jazierski, Franciszek Bohomolik and Franciszek Zablotski. He also supported publishers including, Peter Świtkowski, and library owners such as Józef Lex. He supported the development of the sciences, particularly cartography. He hired a personal cartographer, Carol de Perthes even before his election as king. A plan he initiated to map the entire territory of the Commonwealth, however, was never finished. At the Royal Castle in Warsaw, he organized an astronomical observatory and supported astronomers Jan Sniadecki and Marcin Odlanitsky Pochabit. He also sponsored historical studies, including the collection, cataloging and copying of historical manuscripts. He encouraged publications of biographies of famous Polish historical figures, and sponsored paintings and sculptures of them. For his contributions to the arts and sciences, Poniatowski was awarded in 1766 a Royal Fellowship of the Royal Society, where he became the first royal fellow outside British royalty. 
In 1778, he was awarded Fellowship of the St. Petersburg Academy of Sciences, and in 1791 of the Berlin Academy of Sciences. He also supported the development of industry and manufacturing, areas in which the Commonwealth lagged behind most of Western Europe. Among the endeavors in which he invested were the manufacture of cannons and firearms and the mining industry. Poniatowski himself left several literary works, his memoirs, some political brochures, and recorded speeches from the same. He was considered a great orator and a skilled conversationalist. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Conflicting assessments. King Stanislaw Augustus remains a controversial figure. In Polish historiography and in popular works, he has been criticized or marginalized by authors such as, Zyman Askenazi, Joachim Lelowell, Jerzy Logic whom Andrzej Zahorski describes as Poniatowski's most vocal critic among modern historians, Tadeusz Korzen, Karol Zizuski and Krystyna Zienkowska, whereas more neutral or positive views have been expressed by Paweł Jasenica, Walerian Kalinka, Władysław Konopczynski, Stanisław Makiewicz, Emanuel Rostworowski and Stanisław Wasilewski. When elected to the throne, he was seen by many as simply an instrument for displacing the somnolent Saxons from the throne of Poland. Yet as the British historian, Norman Davies notes, he turned out to be an ardent patriot, and a convinced reformer. Still, according to many, his reforms did not go far enough, leading to accusations that he was being overly cautious, even indecisive, a fault to which he himself admitted. His decision to rely on Russia has been often criticized. Poniatowski saw Russia as a lesser evil, willing to support the notional independence of a weak Poland within the Russian sphere of influence. However, in the event Russia imposed the partitions of Poland rather than choose to support internal reform. He was accused by others of weakness and subservience, even of treason, especially in the years following the second partition. During the Kosciuszko uprising, there were rumors that Polish Jacobins had been planning a coup d'état and Poniatowski's assassination. Another line of criticism alleged poor financial management on his part. Poniatowski actually had little personal wealth. Most of his income came from crown estates and monopolies. His lavish patronage of the arts and sciences was a major drain on the royal treasury. He also supported numerous public initiatives, and attempted to use the royal treasury to cover the state's expenses when tax revenues were insufficient. The same promised several times to compensate his treasury to little practical effect. Nonetheless contemporary critics frequently accused him of being a spendthrift. Andrzej Zahorski dedicated a book to a discussion of Poniatowski, The Dispute Over Stanislaw August Spor o Stanislawa Augusta, Warsaw, 1988. He notes that the discourse concerning Poniatowski is significantly colored by the fact that he was the last king of Poland, the king who failed to save the country. This failure, and his prominent position, rendered him a convenient scapegoat for many. Zahorski argues that Poniatowski made the error of joining the Targowice Confederation. Although he wanted to preserve the integrity of the Polish state, it was far too late for that, he succeeded instead in cementing the damage to his own reputation for succeeding centuries. Remembrance Poniatowski has been the subject of numerous biographies and many works of art. Voltaire, who saw Poniatowski as a model reformist, based his character, King Tusser in the play Les Lois de Minos on Poniatowski. At least 58 contemporary poems were dedicated to him or praised him. Since then, he has been a major character in many works of Józef Ignacy Kraszewski, in the Rock 1794 trilogy by Władysław Stanisław Raymond, in the novels of Tadeusz Lopoluski, and in the dramas of Ignacy Grabowski, Tadeusz Makinski, Roman Brandstatter and Bogdan Smigielski. He is discussed in Louise Mulbach's novel Joseph II and His Court, and appears in Jane Porter's 1803 novel, Thaddeus of Warsaw. On screen he has been played by Wienczysław Glinski in the 1976 Three Maha directed by Zegos Krolikowicz. He appears in a Russian TV series. Poniatowski is depicted in numerous portraits, medals and coins. He is prominent in Jan Modico's work, especially in the 1891 painting, Constitution of 3 May 1791 and in another large canvas, Retin, and in his series of portraits of Polish monarchs. A bust of Poniatowski was unveiled in Lazinki Palace in 1992. 
A number of cities in Poland have streets named after him, including Kraków and Warsaw that also has a bridge over the Vistula River in his honor. Family Poniatowski never married. In his youth, he had loved his cousin Elspieta Zartoryska, but her father August Alexander Zartoryski disapproved because he did not think him influential or rich enough. When this was no longer an issue, she was already married. His Pacta Conventa specified that he should marry a Polish noblewoman, although he himself always hoped to marry into some royal family. Upon his accession to the throne, he had hopes of marrying Catherine II, writing to her on 2 November 1763 in a moment of doubt, If I desired the throne, it was because I saw you on it. When she made it clear through his envoy Rezwiski that she would not marry him, there were hopes of an Austrian archduchess, Archduchess Maria Elizabeth of Austria 1743-1808. A marriage to Princess Sofia Albertina of Sweden was suggested despite the religious differences, but this match was opposed by his sisters, Ludvika Maria Poniatowska and Isabella Poniatowska, and nothing came of it. The ceremonial role of queen and hostess of his court was played by his favorite niece, Ursula Zamoyska. A few historians believe that he later contracted a secret marriage with Elspieta Shidlovska. However, according to Waridiana Fiziroa, a contemporary who knew them both, this rumor only spread after the death of Poniatowski, was generally disbelieved, and moreover, was circulated by Elspieta herself, so the marriage is considered by most to be unlikely. He had several notable lovers, including Elspieta Branica, who acted as his political advisor and financier, and had children with two of them. With Magdalena Agnieszka Sapiezina (1739–1780), he became the father of Konstantia Zwanawa (1768–1810) and Michal Sichaki (1770–1828). With Elspieta Shidlovska (1748–1810), he became the father of Stanislaw Konopnicki Grabowski (1782–1845), Michal Grabowski (1773–1812), Kazimierz Grabowski (1770), Konstantia Grabowska, and Isabella Grabowska (1776–1858). Topic: Issue. Ancestors Titles, honours and arms The English translation of the Polish text of the 1791 Constitution gives his title as Stanislaw August, by the grace of God and the will of the people, King of Poland, Grand Duke of Lithuania and Duke of Ruthenia, Prussia, Masovia, Samogitia, Kiev, Volhynia, Podolia, Podlasi, Livonia, Smolensk, Severia and Chernihiv. Domestic Order of the White Eagle, Poland, 1756. Order of Saint Stanislaus, 1765. Order of Virtuti Militari, 1772. Topic: <inaudible> Foreign. Order of the Black Eagle, 1764. Order of Saint Andrew, 1764. Order of Saint Alexander Nevsky, 1797. Topic: Arms. Topic: Gallery. Topic: See also. Ambassadors and envoys from Russia to Poland 1763 to 1794 Warsaw Society of Friends of Learning History of Poland 1569 to 1795 Poles in the United Kingdom Topic Notes A carrot sources vary as to whether Konstantia Grabowska and Kazimierz Grabowski were Poniatowski's children. 
They are listed as such by several sources, including Jerzy Michalski's article on Stanislaw August Poniatowski in the Polish Biographical Dictionary. However, Marek Jerzy Minikowski's website on descendants of great same participants lists neither Kazimierz Grabowski nor Konstancja Grabowska as Poniatowski's children, and for Elspieta Szydlowska, it lists only Kazimierz Grabowski as Jan Jerzy Grabowski's child. 